अच्छा वो बताओ कंबल के एक एक रुई के यदि हम उखाड़ते रहे कंबल रहेगा हम इस संसार में आए हैं भगवान के We have come into this material world. Bhajan of Bhagavan. So what is the absolute truth? It's that one day we must go from here. This is the uh, ultimate truth. Because whoever comes into this material world, they must go. They may not, they cannot stay. Even though none of us want to go. Does anyone want to go? Nobody wants to go. When old age comes and we have, and our bodies don't work well, we can't do any work. Then we say, Bhagavan, lift, lift me up. When we have pain in our back, we have so many diseases, so much trouble. Then sometimes we fold our hands and pray to Bhagavan, Oh Bhagavan, uplift me. But this is also not true. Could you ever tell one Katha, there is an old person, uh, an old woman, she would she would collect wood from the from the forest and she would go and sell it at the market and maintain herself. But when she collected so much wood, it became uh, in excess. So then how is she going to lift that? Then she got some pain in her back. So when she got pain in her back, she started to say to Bhagavan. She started speaking to who? Oh, the presiding deity. Of, oh, Yamaraj. Okay. She started calling to Yamaraj, the presiding deity of death. She started saying, you please uplift me. So then Yamaraj came. When, when Yamaraj came, he said, Who are you? You, you have called me. Oh, she said to Yamaraj, Who are you? Yamaraj said, I am Yamaraj, you have called me. I am come to take you. Where? To that place where everyone goes. Mirtulok, the, the place of death. So she became fear, fearful. And then the old woman began to say that, No, I called you. For this reason, because I have extra wood here, please help me lift this wood up to on my head. So this is true. We say that, hey Prabhu, uplift me, deliver me, but no one wants to go from this material world. Why? Because this illusory maya, it has caught us and kept us here. So you may say anything. So that's why this is an ultimate truth, that uh, ultimately we have to go from here. Okay, the So he's saying one Hindi kirtan here. Hey man, oh mind, do bhajan of Krishna's names. You have to go from one, uh, at some point you have to go from here. What great people have come, wealthy people, knowledgeable people, realized people, have they all gone or not? Our grandfather, his grandfather, they have all, one after another, they have all gone. So, what can you say? This is the rule of this material world. Therefore, this is truth. However, see what our, what our scriptures say. That before going, we should do such type of work that the entire world will remember us. 
Let's do that type of work before we leave. That, that after our going, the entire world will, re will remember me. So we should do that type of activity. What type of activity is that by which the entire material world will remember us? So you tell. Perform bhajan of Bhagavan's name. Become Bhagavan's devotee. See, like a, a devotee, like Hanuman, not to be seen in the past, present, or future. The way he served Ramachandra. Therefore, in all these temples all over the place, there is the the murti, the uh, deity of Hanuman, and he's worshipped. So from externally we see Hanuman that he's a monkey. If someone calls someone a monkey, will they be offended or not? But see, Hanuman, even though Hanuman is a monkey, we worship him. Do we worship him or not? Yes, we do. In the Hindu mandirs, the temples, Hanuman is there. And on the chariot of Arjuna, on the flag above the chariot of Arjuna, Hanuman is present there. So Hanuman is not anyone ordinary. Why? Because at all times he chanted the names of Bhagavan, Ram, 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 Ram. By the name of Ram, Okay, so I'm telling one katha, one story. One time Bhim was going on one route. Kishkinda ki baat, Kishkinda, someone. Uh, so Hanuman was seated there and he was chanting Ram, 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 Ram. So Hanuman's tail was extended outward there as Beam was going down the path. And Beam is like very extremely strong. He holds this club on his shoulder. He can lift anything. So Beam became proud. So Beam started saying, whose tail is this that's here on this path? Move this, I need to go. So see, Hanuman started saying, I cannot lift my tail. I've become old. Can you just move my tail a little and then you can go ahead? And Beam said, no, why, why should I move your tail? Who do you think I am? Why should I move your tail? You move your own tail. Hanuman began to say that I cannot lift it. You please just lift it and see or just go by another route. Beam said, no, I'm going by this route, I'm going the straight route. Hanuman said, so if you must go, then lift my tail and go. Like if there's a rope there, then we just lift the rope and we go. So in the end, what did Bhim do? He grabbed the tail of Hanuman by his hand. And then Hanuman shaked, shaked his tail a little bit. And then Bhim, he just flew miles away and fell down there. So we're saying for this reason, and how much respect we have for Hanuman, how much affection, how much worship we do of him. Why? Because he has so much faith in Ram, in the name of Ram. Wherever he may be, 
You see Hanuman is chanting the name of Ram. Wherever a devotee of Hanuman may be, wherever the katha of Ram is going on, Hanuman arrives there. So he has this type of a nature, Hanuman. The purport of my speaking this is, however many great persons are there in this world, all their names are written. Uh, whose name will be kept above? Whoever is a knowledgeable person, a yogi, the superior, the most name that will be written is the name of the devotee. So, we're trying to display the glories of Bhagavan's devotees today. So, before leaving this world, perform that type of activity that this world will remember you. They will remember that this person, he was a devotee of Bhagavan. So, the karmi, the jnani, the yogi, they are all fallible. They will all fall. They will fall from their positions. But the devotee, he will not fall. Bhagavan says himself, Nami Bhakta Pranashyati Arjuna. You take this promise, this pledge that mm, my devotee will never perish. Nami Bhakta Pranashyati Arjuna is saying, Prabhu, you take this, uh, announce this yourself. Why should I announce it? Mm. In Bhagavan saying, even if I'm taking a promise, uh, I can't keep that promise. This one promise. Uh, in the beginning of the Mahabharata war, at that time Arjuna and Duryodhan, the two of them, they both came to Bhagavan. Arjuna and Duryodhan. Duryodhan said, um, to Bhagavan, he said, you come in my group, on my side. And Arjuna said to him, you come on my side. What did Bhagavan say? Bhagavan said, you are both equal to me. I'll do one thing. On one side, there is me, and on the other side, uh, on one side, all of my armies, and on one side, me. And I will not pick up any weapons. I will not lift any weapons. But to speak of fighting in the war, I won't even lift a single weapon. Duryodhan began to consider he's, he's of no use if he's not going to fight. If he comes into our group and he won't fight, then for what purpose is he coming? He's coming just to eat. <laughs> He's, he's no use. <coughs> so I should take his Ashwini Senas, his, uh, his so many groups of warriors. But then they will fight for me. If I just take Krishna, what will he do? He won't even fight. He's not going to lift any weapons. He's not going to be fighting. We're calling him to fight. So he's going to come and not do anything? Why I should take him? So Duryodhan said, well, there's no necessity to take you. And he went to Arjuna. And Arjuna said, Prabhu, you don't have to do anything. He said, you just become my charioteer. See, what did Bhagavan Krishna become? He became the charioteer of Arjuna's chariot. So the, the phrase here is Arth Sarthi. It's meaning Parth Sarthi, sorry. Parth Sarthi, because Parth is Arjuna and Sarthi is the one who is driving his chariot. So he said, I'm not going to lift any weapons here on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. And at this time, what did Bhishma Pitama say? 
He said, if I am the son of Ganga, which he is, he said, I take a vow that from Bhagavan's hand, I will make him lift a weapon. And on the battlefield, it happened in that manner. When Arjuna and Bhishma, Pitama began to fight, at that time, Arjuna was defeating Bhishma. Oh wait, Ar Arjuna was being defeated by Bhishma. And seeing this, what Bhagavan Krishna, what did he begin to think? He's saying, how can my devotee become destroyed? How can my devotee become defeated? So Krishna, he exhibited so much anger. He got down from the chariot. And getting down from the chariot, one of the wheels of the chariot, he lifted that on his hand and he began running. He began running towards Bhishma to kill him. At that time, Bhishma, he began to recite prayers. He said, Prabhu, I became defeated. He said, I defeated you because you broke your promise. You broke your vow. So Bhagavan says in the Gita also, Hey Arjun, you take a promise that my devotee is never destroyed. So when my devotees make a promise, then I am bound to keep that. So Kamis, Ganis, Yogis, they are all perishable, they fall, they're fallible. But the devotee of Bhagavan, he never falls from his position. If someone just does a little bit of bhajan of Bhagavan, Neha Vikrama Nashusti, the shloka in Gita is saying that if someone just follows a little bit of some limbs of bhakti, then if someone just sits in sat satsanga for just one day, just one day, just one minute, he sits in sat satsanga in the association of devotees, then Bhagavan bestows his mercy upon him. So the glories of the, the association of devotees are therein. So I'll tell a brief story so that we may all understand what is the glories of Sadhu Sangha. So in so many births, maybe bhajan will happen, but at some birth we can arrive in Sadhu Sangha. Just in Sadhu Sangha where Hari Kata is going on, where Bhagavad Kata is going on, just come. It's not even a matter of coming, just take the promise that I will come. That's all. It may be that you don't manage to come, that you, like, you get lost or you pass away or something. Or there's like a lot of traffic and you can't come. So, in India it's seen like that, there's so much traffic jam that maybe you can't even go. So, you, you have your, your mind that you're going, but then you just sit in the traffic jam and you can't go. So that happens. But let's go back to the kata. So it's said like that in Bhagavad. So that place where Harikata is going on, where Sadhu Sangha is going on. Yeah, simply take a vow to go there. And then as soon as you take that vow to go there, then Bhagavan sits in the heart. This is evident, there is evidence of this in the scriptures. So I tell one short guitar. So the glories of Sadhu Sangha. <laughs> Someone said traffic jam, so I got a traffic jam in my mind. 
So listen. It was this one. So many stories, instances are there of the glories of Sadhu Sangha. So there's one mentioned in the Mahabharata. One time Yudhishthira Maharaj, Bhagavan said, um, uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj said to Bhagavan, I want to perform a Rajasuya Yajna. Yudhishthira Maharaj said, Rajasuya. Yeah. So he wants to invite all the kings and do a huge fire sacrifice, yagya. There's so many things that go on within this Rajasuya, yagya. So hearing this, Bhagavan began to say that Yudhishthira, it's a very good thing. Like, what th these very auspicious activities, you should do them quickly. Shubham, Shigram, something. So if, some, if it comes in your mind that I should do some good thing, you should do it quickly. If it comes in your mind to do something bad, you should delay. You should think, I'll do that later. So if it comes in your mind to do something good, do it quickly. And bad things, just say, I'll do it later. So Bhagavan began to say that this is a very good thing to give donation, to uh, do charity. So y'all are five brothers. And Duryodhan has 100 brothers. So, um, 108 brothers coming together, y'all should perform this Rajasurya Yajna. Yudhishthira Maharaj began saying, okay, that's good. So, for the Rajasurya Yajna, they made all preparations. So, Bhim took the, uh, he took the kitchen duties. He was managing the kitchen duties. Beam and Draupadi. They are both very expert in the kitchen. Draupadi is like direct uh, expansion of Lakshmi. She is not anyone ordinary. She became manifested from fire. So, Draupadi is also known as Chaya Sita. This Chaya Sita in another Kalpa became Dalpadi. So she is also an expansion of Lakshmi. There's so many Kathas in the scriptures. So I'm just telling this. So where was Dalpadi manifest from? Dalpadi is also considered one avatar incarnation of Lakshmi and when she makes when she cooks then she makes very beautiful preparations and Bream is very powerful he is the incarnation of Vayu the wind god to Bhim and Jabhari what did they begin to do? they began to do the kitchen services and Arjun was given the, the task that so many great sadhus and rishis are going to come, so he got the task of welcoming them. Nakul and Sahadev, all these sadhus and great souls that will come, um, they also welcome them and feed them and, and make all the preparations for the yajna. And Yudhishthira will see that all things are being done properly or not. He will be inspecting. And Duryodhan and Dushashan, they were given the task that uh, whatever, however many great persons, saints will come, they will give them donations. Duryodhan Dushashan began thinking, he's given one saying, 
uh, thinking that we will finish the entire kingdom of Yudhishthira and then he won't have any more wealth remaining. So Duryodhana and Dushashan, they are very wicked. They are thinking that we will give such vast wealth in these donations that Yudhishthira Maharaj will become like a renounced sadhu. He will become. <laughs> If, if he says to give one cloth to someone, we'll give ten. If he says to give one hundred rupees to someone, we'll give one hundred thousand. It's funny. So, wherever Bhagavan is himself is present, is there any shortage there? Is there anything lacking there? So, the Yajna was began in the morning time. Great kings came. And however many saints and great souls came, they were all served in a very nice manner. And Bhagavan said, I also want to just do one task for this yoga. I want to give some contribution. He said, however many saints come, I want to wash their feet. So who's, who's very great, then he takes a very small task. And who's very small, he takes a very great task. So what type of task did Bhagavan take? So the Yajna began at early morning, and all of the saints and great souls had come. So they're doing the Yajna, Swaha, when you do Havan, then the Yajna, then you say Om Visheshnaya Swaha, Om Sanakaya Swaha, Om Sanandaya Swaha, Om Sanakumaraya Swaha. So, like this. The, the form of the Yajna, he says. <laughs> <laughs> then when there's pain in the back, they say, Aha. So if there's half an hour, no problem. But if there's one hour or two hours, just saying Swaha, Swaha, then you start to have some pain in the back. What does that mean? It means, O oh, Brahman, just quickly, quickly complete this. <laughs> so it takes two, three hours to complete the sacrifice. And if you do it really properly, it'll take at least five hours. It takes time. Some people just see how much money they give, and then according to how much money they give, they do that extensive of a yajna. So in India, if someone just gives a hundred rupees, then just, you know, swaha and finish. So then they'll just do three mantras and finish. Adi Madi, Ad, Adi Madhya Ante, there's three, three uh, mantras. <laughs> so for the first chapter, one mantra. In the middle of the chapter, one mantra. In the last chapter, one mantra and Swaha. Yes. <laughs> so he said, Brahman Thakur, why have you done so fast? And he's saying, well, that was the 100 rupee yagya. <laughs> he's saying like, Brahman Thakur, why, how did you finish so fast? And he said, well, that was the 100 rupee yagya. So in India, there's these types of Brahmins also. We've seen that. So, some Brahmins are like that, they're just greedy for money, and however much money you give, they'll do that much work. So, it's saying, there's some saying, it's like, throw the money and see the show.
So real Brahmins, uh, whether you give money or you do not, they will do their work. They will do their task. So from morning, the Brahmins, until complete evening, they would just keep doing yagya, swaha, swaha, swaha. So all of these mantras, one one mantra from the Vedas, they would they would give that that oblation into the fire. So there at the Rajashuya, so many great persons were coming and they were welcoming all of them. They were giving prasad to everybody. Yudhisthira Maharaj. So they made so many wonderful preparations. And Duryodhana and Dushashan, what did they begin doing? They began giving so much donations, giving away Yudhisthira's wealth. And I said already that wherever Lakshmi herself is present, wherever Bhagavan is present, there will be no shortage whatsoever. Not even a little bit. No matter how many people come, no matter where they come from, there will be no sort of shortage. See, Anavrit Prakama and Vaj Prakama, we just we prepare for a few people, but so many people come, and then it's the the, the prasad is never finished. You've seen that, how much grand size of uh, walks. Rice, like like a mountain of rice, is made. 10,000, 20,000 Bengalis come, and they just come and come and come. Because if with a, with a pure mind you serve Bhagavan, then you will never have any shortage. This is a true matter. And who will be miserly? Everything he, he will lose. He will lose everything. That person who's a miser, he will lose everything. And with the open heart, with a pure heart, who serves Bhagavan, he will never have any shortage. This is true. So Yudhishthir Maharaj. He did such a grand yagya. He was feeding everyone, serving everyone. And everyone started to say, Yudhishthir Maharaj ki jai. Everyone was eating, drinking and going. And everyone was singing the glories of Yudhishthir Maharaj. So, so many people have done yagya, so many people have done Don donations throughout all of the ages, but in the manner that Yudhishthira Maharaj did this yagya and the donation, the charity, no one has done that in that way, past, present, or future. So then what is the concern of Yudhishthira Maharaj? He's, he's thinking, did the yagya get complete or not? So before the yagya, you just ask something from Bhagavan. He said, Oh Yaduvar, Oh Bhagavan, you kindly tell, how can I understand if my yagya has become complete? When, it, when the yagya becomes successful and it becomes complete, how will I understand? Just by serving people, like feeding people, is it complete? Bhagavan said, Look, Yudhishthir, Tai Taiwan clock in this place of the yagya. This is called Vijay Vijay Ganta. It means victorious clock. Oh, bell, yeah, yeah, it's bell. It's not clock. <laughs> the similar word for clock and bell, but this is bell. Vijay Ganti, Ganta. So, Vijay Bell. So then, when that, so when that goes, you will understand that the yoga is complete.
In Yudhishthira Maharaj, from morning till evening, he's going, doing the yagya. But the bell has not rang. Everyone's singing his glories, but Yudhishthira is thinking the bell still has not sounded. Thousands of people may give my, sing my glories, but the, the bell doesn't ring. Then how is the yagya successful? This hundreds of thousands of rupees that I've spent, what is the, what is the uh, resu- result of this? If the bell has not rang, then it's not successful. So Yudhishthira Maharaj was sitting, he put his hand on his head in concern. So then he's thinking, when it when he when it becomes sunset, then the rishis will stop the yagya. So from the morning to the end of the yagya at sundown, this the the, the sac- fire sacrifice is going on. But then the sunset is going on. The sun is setting, and the bell has, still has not rang. So Yudhishthira is thinking, what is going on? Yudhishthira went to Bhagavan, he began to pray. Hey Bhagavan, you tell. Why this Vijay Ganta, this bell is not ringing? At this time, Bhagavan himself, he said, this one saintly person, who has not come, who has not come to a yoga, he has not taken any prasad. As soon as he will come and participate in this yoga, then it will become complete and that bell will begin to ring. So, who is that saint? Where is he at? Bhagavan said, Bhim, you go and search for this saintly person who has not come yet. Bhimi took his club and began to go. There's a small lane there. Small alley. So in that alley, there was a saint who had this uh, sores of leprosy all over his body and he was just chanting Ram, 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 Ram. Bhim went there and said, Oh Saint, you haven't come and participated in our yajna. And he's saying, no one has called me. Bhima said, Oh saintly person, kindly come to our yajna. This saint, he said, I'm not just that type of saint. I'm not just that type of saint where you will tell me that just come and then I will come. I'm not like that. He said, how is that? And he said, you'll have to give me dakshina. And he said, however much you want, Duryodhana and Dushashana are sitting there. However much you want, they will give. Hundreds and thousands, millions of rupees, then you, we, we're just giving that. So the saint said, no, I'm not that type of saint who takes money. So he said, what do you want? Then he said, I want the fruit of 1,000 yeah, 1, ashramated yogis. I want the fruit of that. Can you give that? I don't need rupees. I don't need clothes. I need the fruit of 1,000 Ashramada Yagyas. Then Bhim said, this is the first time we're doing Rajasu Yagya. So when you do it 100 times, Rajasu Yagya, you get the fruit of one Ashramada Yagya. He's saying, so where, from where will we give that fruit? So then he went to Bhagavan, and Bhim said, he said, I, I understood which saint it was that has not yet come. And what is he demanding? He's demanding 1,000 Ashramada Yagyas, the fruit of that. And Bhagavan is saying, he's saying, Bhim, you sit. And then he sent Draupadi. He said, Draupadi, you go and call the saintly person. So Draupadi came. Draupadi came and said, Oh, saint, kindly come to our yajna. 
Do you kindly participate in our yajna? So the saint said, I'm, just, I'm not just any type of sane person that just wants dakshina. So I want the fruit of 1000 ashramita yagas. He said the same thing. No, it was 1000 before. What did I say? So Dopati said, you only want oh, you only want this fruit of so many ashramita yagas. We can give you so much more than that. Then, Bhima said that this is the first time doing Rajasuri Yoga, so from where we will give the fruit of 1000 Ashramita Yoga. Then Jopadi began to relate a very beautiful Katha. What is the meaning of this? When you are going to meet with saints, you should leave all your abhiman, all your pride. And then every step, when you're moving towards meeting with those saintly persons, you get the fruit of thousands of sacrifices. So when you're going to meet the saints, and you leave, you renounce your pride, then every step is equal to thousands of sacrifices. So you lift one pair, you keep the other one. Sankaror. So like so many like millions, billions of yagas. <laughs> the fruit of the billions and millions of yagas, you get that. So just remember this verse. Jopadi began saying this. That I have renounced all of my shyness, all of my um, ab, uh, pride, and I've come to you. I've not come to just give you horses and donations. I've come on my feet. So, I'm picking up one foot, taking one step, the, how, the result of how many yagas have I received? And this saintly person became shy. He said, oh wow, you related a very beautiful thing. Then this saint, he came to the yagya. And then Draupadi herself had pre um, prepared the, the cooking had offered the reparations to Bhagavan and served the saint. So the saint began to eat. So he was eating and then he was sitting near to Yudhishthira Maharaj. And then how was he eating? However many preparations were made, ladus, kachoris, jalebi, the saint he would mix them all together and he would eat that. <laughs> so however, whoever eats in what manner, what's, what's our dealing with that? So Yudhishthira Maharaj was watching. So Yudhishthira Maharaj wanted that this saint should eat. That then after he would eat, the bell would ring of its own accord. So this saint, he, he ate and then the bell it still did not ring. So then, what happens? That was the last saint. He ate. So why is that bell not ringing? So, so Yudhishthira Maharaj began to study to Bhagavan. Say, Bhagavan, tell me now, what type of offense did I make? I served all these saints and the bell is still not ringing. Then Bhagavan began to say, you just hear, hear one thing. The saint who was eating, when he was eating, did some mood come in your mind? 
some mood, some thought came in your mind. Then you Dishti Maharaj began to say, Oh, yes. oh Prabhu Gaur, oh Bhagavan, when he was eating, I was thinking, I was thinking he's not a saint from a very highly prestigious family. He's one of these saints that just wanders here and there. Because see how the way he eats and drinks. So it's Bhagavan Prasad, it's Ladu, Kachori, Jalebi, very nice things. So take each one separately at one, at the, at one t- at different times. And he just made kishri with the ladus, with everything, and then ate. So that's not a nice way to eat. And his cloths are like torn and scattered. And he doesn't know how to eat properly. Jopadi took so much trouble to make such beautiful preparations, ladus, kachoris, all of these things. What else did she make here? <laughs> Chutney, papar. But this saint, he just mixed everything and ate it. If a Yudhishthira said, in my mind, this thought came, that he's not from a very highly like prestigious family. He's just a saint that wanders here and there. And then Bhagavan said, You too much, you created you did an offense at the lotus feet of this sadhu. So these saints who perform bhajan of Hari, they are of they are they are Haris. They are like the property of Hari. They like Hari Ka, they are his, they are Haris. Like those who perform his bhajan, they are so remember, this is why they say Hari Das, the servant of Hari. If one does bhajan of Bhagavan, don't ask, don't, don't ask that of which, what type of family are you from, what caste are you from. So who performs bhajan of Hari, he belongs to Hari. Who performs bhajan of Hari? What is his gotra? It is Achuta gotra. Do you know what your gotra is? Someone is Kashyap gotra. Someone is Sandili gotra. Gotra is something that indicates your ancestry. But one who comes to Bhagavan, he is Achuta gotra. Hmm. Infallible. Yeah. So those who are, who are Chuta Gotra, they are infallible. So when one takes Diksha with this Vaishnava mantra, they are said to be a Chuta Gotra. So those who perform bhajan of Bhagavan, we should never criticize them. So Bhagavan said, Yudhishthira, you have perho- done an offense at the lotus feet of the saint. He said, go and ask forgiveness from him. Oh, Yudhishthira Maharaj. Go and do pranam to him. Ask forgiveness from him. Bhagavan began to say, Oh, Yudhishthira, Drupadi. Again, uh, feed the saintly person. So they again cooked. They again had the saintly person eat. And when he ate, the Vijaya Ganta began to sound. The bell, the bell played. The bell rang. So there's very, there's so much instruction here. Here, there's so much instructions here. The glories of Sadhu Sangha are being told here, of saintly person's association. So in the association of saints hearing Harikata, 
Kapil is saying to Devahuti that whatever you do in your life, the main thing is that always, always, you should remain in Sadhu Sangha. Stay with saintly persons, always. If you want to make your life success, always remain in Sadhu Sangha. You must always rem remain in the association of saints. They say this word addiction. Someone's, someone's addicted to uh, alcohol, someone's addicted to smoking. So you tell them, stay in saintly person, stay under the guidance of saintly person. Otherwise you will never become free from this addiction. Reside, remain in, this, in the association of saintly persons. And then whatever bad habit you have, that will become destroyed. How can you leave that? Something that becomes left for a few days, it comes back. Just <laughs> the pig. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so he's telling how they put the tail of a dog in some bamboo to try to straighten it out, but when as soon as they would take it out, it would again become crooked. So, we can give up bad habits for some time, for some days, for months, but then again they come. So what is the remedy? The remedy is to stay in the, to stay in the association of saints and great souls. And then all of our bad habits, they will leave us. Otherwise, they will not leave us. So, sadhu sangha, satsangha. At all times, remain in sadhu sangha. Without sadhu sangha, you won't get the mercy of the Lord. Sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sarva shastikai. Remaining in sadhu sangha, hear Harikata. And sadhus are of so many types. The karmi sadhu, the jnani sadhu, the yogi sadhu, the bhakta sadhu. <laughs> so at all times, which sadhu will you remain with? The bhakta sadhu. There's a description given in the Bhagavad. How will he be? Nirmatsaranam satam. Nirmatsar sadhu. You should stay with him. That the sadhu who is completely free from envy. That sadhu who is immersed in envy, who still has envy, by residing with him, your narthas will increase. Your lust, your greed, all of this will increase. So you should reside with sadhu who is near Matsaranam Satam, who is completely devoid of envy. So someone who sees the glories of, of others and criticizes them, he is envious. But, so you should reside with the one who, seeing the glories of others, he does not feel that envy. That person who can see the good qualities in others. So someone who sees the good qualities of others and feels envy, he burns in his heart. He says, oh, everyone is worshipping him. All of these people are following him. So he tries to put that person down. So he tries in so many different ways to push that person down. So that is like an, an envious sadhu. Don't reside with him. And he becomes envious when he sees 
the good qualities of others, his heart begins to burn. So don't stay with that type of a sadhu. Don't associate with that type of a person. Nirmatsaranam satam. Nirmatsar sadhu. The second slope of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, what is called a sadhu? In India, there's no shortage of sadhus. In all the different lanes and alleys, in all the different different houses, sadhus are there. The monkey sadhus, you find a lot. Rich sadhus, you'll find so many different types of sadhus. Chalkabat, I don't know. So those type of sadhus we don't have any dealing with. We need nirmat saram. Those sadhus who are devoid of envy, we must do sadhu sangha. It's said in Bhagavad. But how should they be? Nirmat saranam. In his heart there is no envy whatsoever. Matsarya means enviousness. He remains in his bhajan, his worship. He doesn't have dealings with these things. It's a nirmatsar sadhu. He doesn't have these immersion in these temporary fleeting things. So, there's one. So many different katas. So there is. It's said that in India, who is called a sadhu who has a very long beard? And if it's completely white, then it looks like, oh wow, he's really a great sadhu. <laughs> if, his, if his hair is still black, it's like, oh, he's not, he's not completely ripe yet. <laughs> he's not a ripe sadhu. He's, he's a little raw still. But who has a long white beard and dreadlocks? Oh yeah, that's that's a ripe sadhu. And his stomach should be really big. And how should he speak? Very gravely. Then that's a sadhu. And the rest of them are all not sadhus. So there was one, that sadhu was going on the way to the house of one woman. So there's some saying of my buddies. He was saying that and the woman came outside. He said, oh daughter, uh, feed me some food. And she's saying, oh, what can I feed you? He said, oh, nothing. Just some rice and sabji, that's all. And what did this woman do? First of all, she gave 100 rupees in Dakshina. And then the saint thought, oh, I didn't say anything. And she gave 100 rupees. And then he said, if I, if I say something, then how much can she, will she give me? So he said, I'm going to show some magic. The saint said, daughter, listen. Look, I'm Trikala Darshi. I can see past, present, and future. This land of your, where your house is on, 50 feet under this, there's a well of oil there. It's like an oil oil reserve there. And you will become a millionaire by, by discovering that. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing a divine vision. Just right here in your courtyard, just below the ground, there's a well of oil, a reserve of oil. So you'll get this, well, this, this uh, fortune, this wealth. So she fed the sadhu. So she brought some rice. And she kept some sabji too. So then the saint said, Daughter, if you give some ghee also, that would be nice. And she said, You're a saint. He said, Just move this rice to the side a little, and then there's ghee under there. He said, in my courtyard, just 50 feet under the ground, there's tail, and you can see that. But just under this rice, you can't see that there's some ghee. <laughs> so this is kind of duplicitous sadhu, cheating sadhu. There's so many of them. So by the association of this type of cheating, duplicitous sadhu, you won't get any good result. That's why the Bhagavatam is saying, Nirmat Saranam Satam. So tomorrow we will hear more. You hear in great depth just one one sloka, every sloka of Srimad Bhagavatam. Just hear one sloka in great depth, Srimad Bhagavatam. After Janmadasya, there is this sloka, Dharma Pajita Kaito, etc. Then there's the third one, Nigama Kalpatara. If you just remember these three slokas, you'll have remembered the entire Bhagavat.